So you want to make virtual reality applications? Great! Let's get started. In this quick tutorial, I'll teach you how to use the Java SDK to make your application truly 3D. You may have noticed that rendering for virtual reality is different from normal Android applications. I'm guessing you're using some sort of a graphics API, like OpenGL, or maybe a higher level framework. If you haven't thought about that yet, then take your time to decide. It is really important to get it right. Our own Treasure Hunt demo is using OpenGL ES 2.0 for rendering the graphics in 3D. Now that you have decided on your renderer, it is time to download the SDK. Got it? Let's go. The first thing you need to do is add some tags to your manifest file. Cardboard requires use of API level 16 or higher. The Cardboard SDK requires read and write permissions, so it can pair the user's phone to the Cardboard viewer. The NFC permission is required to access the NFC tag present in some Cardboard viewers. And the device should always be in landscape mode. This is because the user is going to be moving their head and the orientation should not change as they do so. Therefore, it is important for you to lock the screen orientation to landscape. It is recommended for you to handle orientation and keyboard configuration changes to avoid having your application being reset as these changes occur. And finally, if you want your application to show inside the Cardboard app listing, then you should add the Cardboard intent filter. This is highly recommended and can help people discover your application. So make sure you add it. Now, let's get to programming. Start by extending your activity from Cardboard Activity. The Cardboard Activity exposes Cardboard events, such as the trigger, and handles common things required for virtual reality rendering, like hiding the system UI by using Android Immersive Mode. Your activity should also implement the Cardboard View Stereo Renderer interface. This interface handles telescopic rendering and simplifies your work by initializing OpenGL for you and giving you the correct matrices for drawing the scene for each eye. Normally in Android, user interface elements are built using views. In virtual reality, we have just one view element, which we are using as a surface to render to. This is the cardboard view. Add a cardboard view to your layout XML in the following way. Then, in the Activity class, initialize the Cardboard view by setting the renderer and the view like this. It is time to implement the Stereo Renderer. The all new frame callback is called once every new frame before it is drawn. This is a good time to update any render data, such as animation and physics. The callback comes with the head transform data. This class contains the position and the orientation of the user's head. You can use this for calculating where the user is looking at and what the user is interacting with in the environment, such as objects and user interface. You can also use this for frost and calling and reducing the work when drawing for each eye. Drawing should be done in the own draw eye callback. This callback is called twice every frame, as it is required to draw the scene for both eyes. The call contains the eye class. Inside is the view matrix, offsets, and orientation for the eye being rendered. This data correctly offsets the camera's position for the eye, creating the stereoscopic effect. Note that the viewport is also set for you, dividing the screen in two halves. Again, one half for one eye. Simply combine the eye matrix with your own view matrix for correct rendering. Now that we have rendering working, let's talk about input. While looking around can be fun, it is more fun if you can interact with the environment. That is why Cardboard has the trigger. To use the trigger, simply implement the own Cardboard trigger callback. This will be called as the user activates the trigger. Remember that you only have one button so make sure to use it wisely. Make everything work by context. Looking on a button and using the trigger should activate a button. However, if the user is looking somewhere else, you'll want to make something else happen instead, or maybe nothing. Sometimes it is enough to activate things only by looking at them. 
For example, a button can animate as the user looks at it and activate its action after a second or two. This also applies to parts of the scene. You can highlight objects and activate animations as the user looks around. For example, if a butterfly is sitting on a tree, you can make it animate and fly around as the user looks at it. This way, you know the user isn't missing any of the scene, and you are not forcing them to try and interact with everything manually. Now that you know how to make everything work, it is important to keep in mind some best practices in order to make a compelling virtual reality experience. The three most important rules to remember are always keep tracking on, keep stable 60 frames per second or higher, and avoid unexpected motion. One of the things that makes virtual reality compelling is the ability to look around. In contrast, it will feel extremely unnatural if the camera stopped responding to your head. Therefore, you should always take into account the user's orientation and never freeze the camera or force the user to look somewhere specific. If you want to grab the user's attention, use cues such as light and sound to direct them to look where you want. You can also delay activating an event in your scene until you know the user had turned their head in that direction. That way, they have time to take things in and enjoy the scene. You must always keep the 60 FPS or higher. Not only does it contribute to a good user experience, but it is even more crucial in virtual reality. Think about it this way. The screen is the only thing the user can see. Rendering at 60 FPS means the user sees the same frame for 16.6 milliseconds. If you miss 60 FPS, VSync drops you to 30 FPS, and each frame is shown for 33 milliseconds. That means as the user moves their head, they are getting an incorrect image for a very long time. This is why it is very important for virtual reality applications to be fast and responsive. Movement can be tricky because the user does not feel like they are in motion. If the world starts moving around, it can contribute to an odd feeling if there is discrepancy between one's actual lack of movement and what the user is seeing. There are ways to convey movement safely, for example, by keeping motion constant and avoiding acceleration or by using another object and making it move first or creating a path for the user to see. This signals to the user they are about to be moved and subconsciously prepares them. There are many more ways to ensure a good user experience. I recommend you to check out the Cardboard Design Lab application to learn more about good and bad design patterns so you can create the best user experience in your game or application. Good luck with making your own virtual reality experience and make sure to post about it in our Cardboard community. Mm -hmm.